three, two, one. We are starting another awesome interview with another very special guest. I'm Cristiano Galvão from the Excel Turbo, and today I have a guy from the Netherlands, an MVP. Let me bring him to, to my side virtually. Here is Tony the Junker. How, Hello. Tony? Cristiano. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me all the way to uh, Brazil. Well, it's through the internet, but anyway. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I hope to, to meet you in person soon. We should be doing this uh, in April, but it wasn't possible because of the, the COVID. And, but we will be doing this as soon as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So uh, you uh, let me put you on the full screen. Tony mm -hmm. De Jonker, MVP. I have something to show on the screen. But tell me the, the place that, that you are coming from. You are from Netherlands. Yes. I'll show you on the map here. I live here uh, right at the coast. Uh, the city is called The Hague, Den Haag. And the, uh, it has a beach. The beach is called Scheveningen Beach. And as you can see from the map, um, it has a nice big beach. It has a pier. It has a sky wheel and actually uh, a lot of hotels here. I'm, I'm living just in, in close of the courthouse hotel. So every day I'll have a stroll along the beach. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful, uh, and and I'm I'm writing here also Holland because the people, especially here in Brazil, uh, if we say Netherlands, they yeah. they will find uh, difficult to to define where where is the country. But sure. when we say Holland, they they will know because of the World Cup, uh, the, the right. soccer team. Those those countries are used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Some people say Holland, which is fine. Some people say Netherlands, but in, as a matter of fact, uh, Holland is actually only, we have different provinces. So here we have the North, North Holland and we have South Holland. So for us, Holland is only these two provinces. And so I'm living in the South of Holland and in the North mm -hmm. of Holland, Holland was Amsterdam. So in all of the 12 provinces, they are called the Netherlands. But yeah, you know, you can say Holland is, is, is okay. <laughs> uh, and, and I know you have a, an excellent project that, that takes place in, in Amsterdam. We are going to talk about this. I, I have also here on, on my screen, uh, just especially for the Brazilians, uh, they can learn more and, and know more about your country and place here. It's close to, to Germany and Belgium and the other places of Europe. They can find more in the in internet if, if they need. And, and let me bring back to your screen, Amsterdam Excel BI Summit. So you are the, the man behind this. Uh, tell, tell us about the, this project, because I, when, I, when I see the, the pictures the, and the announcements, I think this is amazing. But uh, I would like to hear from you, the, the father of, of this project. <laughs> tell us about this event that yeah, you well, organized. What, what happened is uh, this event started I think in 2014, so six years ago. Well, at that time, I was not even an Excel MVP. Jan Carl Peterson, maybe you know him as well. Jan Carl Peterson, he's also an Excel MVP from the Netherlands. He told me that, um, you know, there was this uh, annual event in the United States where MVPs will meet each other, but sometimes certain MVPs cannot meet each other. So young Carl said, oh, you know what, maybe we'll get some of them here to Holland and we will have our own meeting in Holland with maybe five, six or ten MVPs. I said, oh, that's really nice. So mm -hmm. what, what this is all about, yeah, we're talking about, you know, the, the stuff that Excel is all about. We'll have presentations and uh, so they will be here for one or two days at least. I said, oh, while they're here, maybe it would be nice to have some kind of a summit, you know, a commercially set up summit where we can also invite our customers. Oh yeah, that's very short notice, Tony. Yeah, very short notice. And we don't do nothing or it's very short notice and we do something, which we did. So I started inviting our customers and people I know from way back then and from now. And all of a sudden we had a bunch of people coming in and we started inviting also these MVPs. So the first Excel MVP uh, in Amsterdam was born. And uh, there was really nice because at the time we even had uh, Miss Excel, you know, Bill Zellen in 
personally over to, to Amsterdam. And um, many other people like Charles Williams was there and Haas was there, Kang Pals. So it was uh, really a nice event. And it was only for one day, obviously. And uh, well, we took care of our guests. So even in the evening, we'll have you know nice dinner, have the canal, canal uh, boat tour, etc. So and we had people from everywhere, actually, from different countries, from from Scandinavia, from Belgium, from uh, United Kingdom, from Germany. So it was really an international uh, event, so to speak, which has, of course, its uh, challenges. But uh, yeah, people love going to Amsterdam, obviously. So the first success was born. And then uh, after that, we did it year after year. And uh, I think last year, we even had three days. We had a master class, two master classes with Shandu. And of course, the summit itself. So hopefully next year, we're going to have uh, another one. And after that, our Excel summits were born as well. Then we had one uh, in Australia, which was, uh, I think, uh, organized by Liam Bastig. And then we had one organized in Slovenia by Kasper Kamenschek. You know, and then, of course, uh, mm -hmm. it was born. Yeah, I, saw, I saw Gasper, yeah. Uh, I think the the first time I I, I heard about the 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 X, uh, Excel summit that you ha you have in Amsterdam uh, Amsterdam Excel summit it was because of Gasper or Oz Soler one of the one of them uh, I don't remember which one actually but uh, it's amazing the the work that you have been doing there and. and I see so so great names here, and and this is amazing. In, even from Microsoft, I've told Evo from from Microsoft. Yes. I was watching to a presentation from her on the Microsoft Business Application Summit on, online this this year. It's amazing the work that you have been doing there. Uh, con also, congratulations! Thank you very much. We always invite somebody from uh, Microsoft to join us at the summit and also join us at the uh, MVP meeting, which is a closed meeting only for MVPs then separately, but yeah. So we make yeah. it a nice event and um, well, that is good for the community and also good for our customers to see these persons in public because it never has been done before that we had so many Excel MVPs at one spot, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, it is it's one of the oldest events uh, running nowadays. Uh, from from the, the events that that are taking place, uh, yeah. the, this age that that we are living, I think it's it's the oldest. Maybe two thousand fourteen we started it. Yes, we were the, the, we were the originators, so to speak. <laughs> It's beautiful. Uh, con congratulations. Uh, 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 we we are doing event here, and we know that uh, this. Uh, consumes lo lots of energy mm. to organize, and, and it's not easy. It's not easy because we 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 want to do the the best thing for everyone, and sometimes the the opinions are different. Uh, and we have to to balance uh, the the expectations and and, and sure. uh, con the, congratulations for for this. The yes. thing of it is, is that most of these people I know myself, you know, because. I'm a customer myself, you know, if I go to seminars, I know what to look for. I mean, even if I'm, even if I'm already an MVP, I still go to different seminars in, for example, Germany or Belgium. I like to see how they, you know, um, do a seminar so I can also learn how they do it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very important that you know who your customers are. And um, yes, because I don't really have, you know, a, a big budget to, in big marketing budget so i'll you know approach these people through twitter through linkedin through emails mm -hmm. and stuff like that i never i never made a brochure to send out by post or something like that so and and, yeah. and uh, yeah and, and i see that the the first recognition uh, the first award uh, mvp award it was uh, gi given to you in 2000 15. 15. Yeah, yeah, I have on the screen here now. And then it was uh, in in the the following 
year of the, the first Excel Summit in the first Excel Amsterdam Summit. I guess it must have something to do with it, I, I suppose, right? Because uh, people always ask you, yeah, how do you become an MVP? I think, yeah, they never tell you, but I think you have to be some kind of an ambassador for Microsoft, which means you should be visible in the community and being visible can have different stories you know some people are visible because they have a youtube site like you or some people you know they have a Udemy site some people uh, answer a lot of questions on the internet um from my uh, perspective um you know i'll do the work for my customers i'll teach also some courses here some are paid some are uh, free of charge i always uh, mm -hmm. write some articles over here for example this is our CM magazine, our controllers magazine, which is a Dutch mm. magazine. And every month I'll have an article about Excel. I'll show you one of my articles. See, here's one uh, that uh -huh. is an article which I have written um, for last month. Huh? So it's only oh. two pages. Um, but anyway, this is uh, also being put on the internet as a uh, blog. So Mm -hmm. In that sense, I'm also then people can also find me through the blogs. It's awesome to see an article in a printed magazine. Yes. Because we are so familiar with the, the online thing. Uh, I, I have this experience because the, the Excel weekend in Brazil came to, to, to make balance with all the online uh, projects that was going on. And, and it's very beautiful to see an Excel article in a printed ma magazine because they usually uh, make uh, columns, uh, uh, articles about uh, mm. finance, but they, they forget the, the, the two parts, the, the, yes. the Excel. I've been writing for this uh, magazine since uh, January 2005, so I've written at least 150 articles already. 150? 150? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this magazine appears 10 times a year. So, wow. you know, you know, so wow. next week I already have to start writing an, another blog because it's not also on, on the internet to be found. But it's, I mean, the printed material is still over there. So people uh, subscribe to this physical magazine and they get, of course, access to the internet sites as well. You have to, to be proud of this because it's it's beautiful uh, to contribute with all the this content. Congratulations. And, 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 and since 2015, it, it's a long road to, to run. It's every beautiful. year the actor calls me up and like, Tony, uh, are we going to do a next year for you as well? What do you think? I mean, you've written so many articles. I mean, can you still come up with something new every month? Yeah, sure, I can. So we continue. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Because I do a lot of projects with customers. I always have a lot of ideas. So and then I go sit mm -hmm. in front of computer and then I start typing and the article should be done in two, three hours and then it's, it's done, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sit there for the whole day and think, oh, what should I write? No, no, no. It must be done in two, three hours. Gone. <laughs> it's a donation of your energy, giving this free contribution for all the, the people who want to know more about the two. This is amazing and beautiful. Con congratulations. Uh, I have here the, the, the website that you run yes. is Excel. <laughs> That is in the uh, main I, because I'm going live and online now as well as the next step for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so I should be doing something online as well. So the, the name has already been born, Always Excel, which is like you have to be the best, right? But <laughs> yeah, but also, the, the the website is beautiful and, and it, let, let let me show here. Uh, the website is is very cool blog session here uh i was looking the the content the next coming months we will have also some english articles over there etc these are just some examples but we will have some articles over there and probably i will also open an, an e-learning website yeah i'm also mm -hmm. going very online as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah we are living uh living changes uh, yes, that are absolutely. impacting a lot absolutely <laughs> absolutely so uh um, I'm also now doing a, a, a currently a webinar here of um, for Power BI for a customer of mine. So uh, 
I think the day before yesterday, I already had 100 customers going on to the webinar. So, yeah, that's something new for me as well. So all yeah, of this yeah. stuff I will provide to people who are interested to, and put it on my site on Always Excel. So that's my new project, my new baby, so to speak. Because <laughs> remember, Cristiano, when I started um, working um, on spreadsheets and then working on finance, I mean, I started in the year when we didn't have any personal computers. What, what, when did you just start the, the, the year? Uh, I, I'm going to put here on the screen. Well, that, that I started in the year, I started working in the year that Star Wars was first seen <laughs> on the screen. And also Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that one, huh? <laughs> which, which year? I had to. to... That one, hmm? I'll tell you which year it is. You can. Google it, but it was the year of 1977. Oh, so, so you, you, you got one of the the first versions of, of Excel. 1977, not 1997. No, no, 77. Seven, seven. The, the, oh, one you, you start. And my first, my first spreadsheet, I started in the year that Back to the Future was seen on the big screen. Yeah, I, I saw, saw you writing about this, uh, making a, 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 a association with movies. Which I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> you you have an article about this. That was the year of 1985. That's when I started my first spreadsheet, which was in that year, of course, Lotus One to Three. And then the the oh. bug, you know, the fever got me, and I started already publishing articles in that time for the Lotus magazine. The year was 1985, 86, 1987, et cetera. I started work for American companies as a controller. So I already started doing some automation in Lotus 1 to 3. Wow. So that was really nice. And of course, uh, with the advent of Windows and Excel, I think uh, around 1990, 91, I started working with Excel. Wow. And that was the time that I started working as a freelance uh, for my own company, you know, because I have been fired by my last boss in the year that <laughs> Spielberg released the Jurassic Park. <laughs> that was 1993. So in 1993, I started my own company. Well, actually, I was still looking for a job, which I never found. I always found small assignments, people who had trouble, you know, automating reports and a lot of Excel stuff. And okay, let's do it. Maybe I find a, a nice job, which I never found. So that's <laughs> as well. So now I have assignments of one week, two weeks, a month, uh, three months, whatever, you know, I, I combine it. Currently, I'm helping out with the customer three days a week. And uh, they have their monthly reporting uh, challenges. And their monthly report is done in, hold on to your hats, in PowerPoint. So they start copying stuff from Excel to PowerPoint. Unbelievable. And which is like <laughs> 57, 57 pages. Hello, you know, they have a table uh, from Excel, which is like 36 columns and 50 lines. Well, nobody's going to read it, of course. So uh, I'm helping them to change that over into some kind of an interactive Excel dashboard, maybe later on with some Power BI. We'll, we'll see about that one. So it, it it's interesting how, how some, sometimes we try to reach something, but there's something even better coming for us. Uh, you were searching for a job uh, and trying to be in a, maybe a temporary situation, but that temporary temporary thing it was your main job. Very good to to hear. I, I always like to to know more about the the beginning, uh, the, the journey of the, the guys that, that I read about and that, and then I, I see publishing content because uh, it's so specific that, that all the stories are, are so beautiful. And, yeah, and, I, 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 I can tell you now, Cristiano, that being fired is one of the best things that ever happened to me. Well, not at that time. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm depressed, etc. And now it's uh -huh. the best thing. If I haven't been fired, hadn't been fired, maybe I never, you know, started my own company. Everybody should be fired in his life or her life, you know? <laughs> <laughs>
yes, it will happen some sometime. Uh, usually, when I when I can detect the movements, uh, it's better for us because we can adapt. But sometimes the the changes are, uh, in our lives come uh, suddenly. Uh, we we cannot see. It's like a tsunami, like a like tsunami. COVID nineteen, you know, the coronavirus. Now people have to change their way of doing stuff. You know, I mean. I had some trainings, of course, planned this uh, season, at least uh, March, April, June, whatever. And all of a sudden, we cannot do any trainings. For me, it was a uh, revenue loss of almost, what do you think? Uh, I think almost 20,000 euros gone out of the window. <laughs> well, yes. it can happen. But therefore, you have to be careful as an, uh, as an entrepreneur. Always make sure that you have enough money saved for those days, you know? There are companies in, mm -hmm. in, in only savings for one month or two months, which is not enough. Right? As an entrepreneur, you have to make sure that you have yes. saved for at least, uh, I don't know, half a year or maybe a year. But you have to build on it. And always make sure that you invest in your own knowledge. I mean, I'm still learning a lot of stuff. I see um, challenges with customers. They want to do certain stuff. I said, oh, they don't know that. Maybe I should make a training out of that. So I'll, I'll devise a new training. I, I um, offer it as in-house training, and then maybe I'll offer it later on as a public course. So I've mm -hmm. written many courses now. I've written courses for financial modeling on uh, forecasting, you know, on dashboarding, etc. all based on real experience. There are a lot of trainers who only do the training and never do any consulting. So they always tell the same story, you know? So mm -hmm. one of the days I'm going to build or to write a nice financial modeling book, built on the real practice. Because most yes. of the books are written by the same people, always with the same stories. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and talk, talking of, of financial modeling, I think you are bringing something to, to show them about this, right? I'll show you an example in a minute or two, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I would like to see because uh, when I see people from finance uh, using Excel and the, the communities that they create, it sounds like a very exclusive club. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It's something the language, yeah. <laughs> they they have the, their own language. Yes, yes. Uh, the, their own behavior. It's it sounds like so exclusive. It, it, it would be very good to just see some something from financial modeling here on, uh, on the fly. <laughs> the, the trick is of this, you know. Um, some people are very good in Excel, but they're very technical or they're very good in Power BI, also very technical. And they come and talk with people from finance, for example, but they're only talking in their own jargon. And of course, there is no click. And then it's mm -hmm. difficult to get the assignment. Um, so my challenge to these people is make a nice conversation. Don't use any difficult words. Don't use the words of pivot table, for example. Use it later on, you know. And you've explained mm -hmm. stuff to them. Don't use uh, difficult words. Always talk their own language. And then you will get the assignment, I guess. Because you're talking, you know, you're talking something that they understand. Excellent. So, Excellent. You, uh, you would like to just show so sure. something uh, on, on Excel? Let, let's see. Uh, I'm going to activate your screen. Mm -hmm. We are looking now. Yes, I yeah, can see. So this is what we have, and this is based on a real example, which, of course, the numbers are a bit, um, let's say, uh, huh? not the real numbers, but anyway, we have uh, three sheets. One sheet is the actual numbers, mm -hmm. which is taken out of the uh, bookkeeping program, ERP program, it's called. We have an account number here, and uh, we have the description of the accounts the dates, so every month we have a new turnover of Europe. You can see January 18, February 18, etc. So and with the amounts, obviously, and then we have some new accounts. And so it goes on, right? So this mm -hmm. is like a uh, download you can get from your SAP or whatever you have. Now we have a budget. It looks like this. This is what they want. It's at a different mm -hmm. level. This is at a higher level, turnover, cost of sales. And they like to enter the data like this. These are the prognose, the, the forecast numbers, so to speak. 
January until December. When we go this back, is the budget. This is the budget. This is what they uh -huh, want. Okay. So it's like mm -hmm. a cross table format because for them it's easy to enter a number for personnel over here, you see, and then the next month and the next month. So that's what they want to enter like this, you know, in a horizontal way. But when we go back to actual, the actual is actually a more detailed format, as you can see. We have accounts for turnover Europe, turnover USA, turnover Asia, Africa, etc. Right? Well, at the budget level, we don't have any split by country. So this is at the higher level. Mm -hmm. So now comes the question my manager asked me. I want to have a report that shows me the budgeted numbers versus the actual numbers. Well, and of course, based on level. Luckily mm -hmm. enough, there is another table, which is called the chart of accounts, which is the heart of the uh, every bookkeeping program. It shows us the account numbers. Every account number appears only once with a description, and it shows what kind of account it is. It's a mm -hmm. balance sheet account or it's a profit and loss account. And here we have also then what kind of level is it? So here we see, for example, turnover mm -hmm. Europe, A and Asia, they belong to turnover, see? Okay. The same story with the cost of sales, Europe, USA, Asia, etc. belongs to cost of sales. So mm -hmm. we also have here a column called sign who will need it later in reporting. So yeah, that was my question in one of my assignments. So this is what the manager wanted. He wanted to have a report confronting uh, budgeted the, figures against- The, the, the COA is stands for? COA is? It stands for chart of accounts. Chart, chart like, like, like chart. a graph. Chart of accounts. Right. Chart of accounts, yeah, you write it like this. Like this here? Oh, accounts. I'm going to write it here. Oh, okay. Just, just the box checking. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Like that. Okay. So that was the, the challenge. So, yeah. And I asked my manager, okay, so when do you need to report then? Well, uh, I was hoping he would say, oh, maybe next week or so. But of course, it's not next week. Huh? Guess mm -hmm. what? He, he wants to have the report by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like okay so yeah we, we have a meeting this afternoon so and this was in the morning so yeah so maybe in less than a couple of hours we should have it done well <laughs> can we do it well yeah we can do it we can even do it less than in one hour I'll show you how to do it of course the question is what kind of tools are we going to use well if you have pure Excel and yeah, it's going to be difficult. And you have to do a summation of the turnover here, you know, and put it in another cell. And then, well, that's very difficult. And it's not dynamic because the truth, of, the truth of the matter is that next month we will have a new actual um, download, right? We will have a new budget download over here. And then mm -hmm. we should have a new report automatically. So people think, well, there's probably some Excel VBA involved. Well, no mm -hmm. VBA. The manager mm -hmm. told me, no, I don't want to see any VBA here because I don't know what it is. Huh? It mm -hmm. must be simple. It must not have too many formulas in there. Can it be done? Yes, it can be done. The answer is, you know what the answer is, uh, Cristiano? Mm, show us. <laughs> I'm going to use I'm going to use Power Query for that one. Nobody thinks ah. of Power Query. Ah, no, so no VLOOKUP, no, not an Excel lookup or VLOOKUP. Power Query. Power Query. So I'm going to load mm -hmm. one all of these three tables. I'm going to load them in Power Query, and then I'm going to do some transformations, so they can talk to each other and build on a transformed table. I will create a pivot table mm. let's do it okay um where's power query well under data obviously under data anywhere we have it's called get and transform data hmm? 
I don't know what is it called in Brazilian. What is it called? Uh, get and transform. We we say obter and transformar. Obter, obter, obter e transformar. Yeah. Nice. Okay. It, it, it's the same meaning. Yes. I know. And because mm -hmm. this is an Excel sheet, I'll just click on this one from table range. Uh, for example, uh, before I continue, this is a table, as you can see. Table design. The table here is called data actual. Budget is called data budget. And chart of accounts called data coma. It's very important mm -hmm. to use tables. Well, it's easier, but let's say that. Okay, so now I'm going to do the first table, data from table range and now i'm in a new world the world is called power query editor as you can see which is like a, a different room in excel so here it is account number account description mm -hmm. date, etc it has loaded the first query data actual on the right hand side the steps will be um, recorded well I need to have the following table loaded. So I'm going to do the following, close and load. Some people say, oh, but do I need to choose now? Close and load or close and load too? Well, mm -hmm. I always need the second one because I want to have this in memory. Close and load to dot, dot, dot. Close and load to only create a connection. Okay. And on the right hand side, you'll see the query pane appearing data actual connection only. Let's go to the second one. Do the same story over here data from table range. It's coming in now. Mm -hmm. And we can check it over here. Yeah, data actual is there. Data budget is over here as well. Let's go close and load two. Connection only. Okay. And so go for the last sheet. Data from table range. And of course, we choose here for close and load two. Well, let's check it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have all three of them here. Good. So what I now want to do is I want to transform data actual to a new table whereby I can see what kind of level is involved for each of these account descriptions. So I would like to have a column over here that says level. So if it says turnover Europe, it should say uh, turnover. Turnover USA, it should say turnover. Now that information can be found in the data COA, obviously. There we have a relation mm -hmm. with the account description or account number and the level. So it would be nice to create those reports or those columns. Well, in native Excel, you would probably use a VLOOKUP for that one, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have to look up for that one. We just go to uh, home here, home, combine, and we are going to merge queries merge queries so then a dialog box will open and of course it will show the data actual the one that i was working on and now i have to find the one that i need the information from which is the data coa here's the data coa before you can do any um, lookup things you have to find the columns that are talking to each other account number here click talks to this account number over here, click. The selection has matches, has found matches, which is nice. Now continue, okay. You see, a new column will be opened over here. Click on the double arrow. Let's get rid of all the uh, check boxes here. I want to mm -hmm. have entered, I think the type, I want to see the type the level and the sign. Okay, and there you have it. You see, as though I would have used a VLOOKUP in native Excel, but there we have the type, we have the level, we have the sign. Now, 
the thing of it is, um, this is for people who are working in the, the finance department, they know that certain accounts, they look negative over here. For example, if you turn over all negatives. Well, of mm -hmm. course, purpose, I don't want to see negative numbers because they have been booked credits. So therefore we have to use the sign, sign over here. So if I can create a new column mm -hmm. that multiplies the sign by the amount, I will have you know the proper numbers. So I have to have a new column. How do I do that? Add column. Add column. Yes. <laughs> a custom column. Okay. A custom column. So um, what is the name of the column? Click, click. I will call it amount AMT actual, for example. Huh? So now you have to make a nice formula over here. Is it a difficult formula? I don't think so. It's just the amount here, insert, there it goes, mm -hmm. times, sign, insert. No syntax errors have been detected, so probably the, it's a correct mm -hmm. formula. Okay. And there it is, amount actually, see? Minus mm -hmm. 11, seven minus that one, positive number. Now I should change this format over here into decimal number. Okay, looks good. Now, which columns do I want to um, collect or maintain? Which columns will I need for my reporting? I will need these columns, I think. I will need um, the columns date. I will need date. Mm -hmm. I will need the type. I will need the level. And I will need the amount actual. The rest of the other columns I don't need anymore. They can go. Right click, remove other columns. Okay, good. Now, I know also that um, the budget that is only looking at the PL accounts. There are no balance sheet accounts involved. So, here in the actuals, let's get rid of the balance sheet accounts. So, let's deselect the balance sheet accounts. I now only have the PL accounts over left over. So now I can get rid of the type as well. Remove this column. Now let's put this level here as the first column. So then we have level, date, and amount. Well, date is to be changed into, I think, because it's daytime. Now I want to see it as a date. And let's recall this one as just a month. Okay, good. So we have level, date, amount. What I now want to do is make the same columns in data budget. So I want to change this cross table, which looks like this, into a table that looks also like Level, date, and amount. Ooh, mm -hmm. how do we do that? Maybe a have mm -hmm. the nice thing called unpivots. Do you know the unpivot step? Yes, yes. Well, how does it work? Um, I'm going to stand here in this first column, right click, and then I will choose unpivot other columns. Mm-hmm. Gee, well, you cannot do that in the in native Excel. Much better. <laughs> yes, much so better. <laughs> all, all looks like that. We have to change the names over here. This will be date, and obviously mm -hmm. it's not an ABC. It will be a date, and the value is called amount. Amount. So now we have here on the budget level date amount. Same as on the actual level date amount. What mm -hmm. the next step, what I want to do is basically I want to stack both of these tables onto each other. So you have one big large table. We can do that, but it should have the same columns, same sequence, same headers, same descriptions. But when I start stacking them up onto each other, I don't know which one is actual i don't know which one is budget 
So it's best to add another column here and tell it what type of column is it. So I would add a column called type and then we'll have the name actual over here. Same what I will do with budget. So how do we do that? Add column, custom column. And um, mm -hmm. let's call this click, click type. I want to have the name actual in every cell. Open quotes. It will also put in the action, the ending quotes already there. Actual. No mm -hmm. syntax errors have been detected. Okay. There it is. This is, of course, in ABC text. Mm -hmm. No, I will do the same story with data budget. Also add a custom column. And double click over here, type opening quotes, budget, no syntax errors. Okay, there we have it change it into ABC. Mm -hmm. So now we have transformed both tables, actual and budget, in the same order and sequence in columns. Level, date, amount, type. On the actual, level, date, amount, type. Mm -hmm. So now I would be able to stack them onto each other. It's very important that you have the same order and sequence in columns, the same names, very important. So let's start with data actual. So how can I stack them onto each other? You have to go to home and do an append queries. I will do append queries as new. Okay, so I started with data actual. So I want to do two tables. I want to stack two tables. The first table is data actual. And the second one, of course, data budget. Okay, continue. And there we have it. Appends number one. Level, date, amount, type. Let's click over here. Yeah, we have actual and budget now together, as you can see. Nice. So we have created one big table. Let's call it a different name. Let's call this, for example, total data. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now we're actually done. We're going to use this total data as a source for a new pivot table that we're creating on the front of Excel, in front of Excel. So how do we do that? Close and load, close and load two. only create connection okay so there we have a data actual connection only budget mm -hmm. connection only total data connection only so this one we are going to use as as the base for our pivot table how then well you can right click over here load to dot dot dot, dot. Now we want to see a pivot table report in a mm -hmm. new worksheet. Mm -hmm. Okay. It opens a new worksheet. Let's call this worksheet pivot table. Huh? Let's give the blue color. Yeah, maybe you don't know that, but I always use input for green for input sheets and mm -hmm. blue for output sheets. So mm -hmm. as you can see, we have now loaded 574 rows. Okay, let's close this window now. No, what we, we're going to see the level. Level, there are my levels. I want to see the amounts. Here are my amounts. And the type, I'll put in columns. It's getting some shape. We see some actual numbers, some budget numbers, and grand totals. Of course, we don't want to see any grand totals because we don't want to add actuals with budgets, right? Yes, yes. So best is that we do the following. 
under pivot table design no grand tail totals off for rows and columns yeah it doesn't make sense yeah and maybe a different layout report layout i would choose this one show in tabular form and maybe different color here under design maybe that one here change mm -hmm. the formatting of course mm -hmm. how do we do that choose one of these numbers and then what how do you change the format it's always a quiz question eh? you say oh i'm going to take format cells or i'm going to take number number format, format. yeah or i'm going to Another. use value field settings or i'm going to use i mean but the, the shortcut keys of course choose the number format mm -hmm. accounting euros is fine zero decimals so now we have actuals and budget. Now that looks nice, of course, mm -hmm. almost there. But now we need to have the variance between actual and budget. How do we do that? Calculated field. Yeah, the trick of it is, is it calculated <laughs> field or is it calculated item? Because people are always confused about calculated fields and calculated items. Well, if you go to pivot table analyze, under calculation, see something here, field items and sets. And we have calculated field and this calculated item, but this one has been grayed out, as you can see. Eh? Mm -hmm. The trick of it is, is you have to understand that we are going to create a virtual calculation. And the virtual calculation is, is not adding a new column. If you would like to add a new column, that is called a calculated field. But if we are going to make calculations horizontally, then um, we are going to use a calculated item. Now, if you are standing with your mouse over here or here, you cannot go to the calculated item. Now comes the trick. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to stand with my mouse over here, sorry, over here, or here, or here, you can do a calculated item, you see? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know in the past that it really depends on where you're standing with your mouse. So you have to stand over here, do a calculated item. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Well, let's call it variance, variance. You have to put in a formula over here. Let's get up to zero. It's of course actual, insert item, minus budget, insert item. Okay, mm -hmm. and there it is. Ta -da. Mm -hmm. No formula involved over there. <laughs> Yes. Nice. Much okay. better than, than trying to make that the, those external formulas at the side of the, the pivot table, but the pivot table changes of, of size. So people start to use the, that uh, Jerry rig uh, if functions to, to check if it's mm -hmm. blank, if it's blank, blah, 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 uh, keeps blank, or, or else you do the calculation. It's Jerry yeah. rig, but this is native, much better. This is very simple. This, uh, I mean, in a simple user can already understand this and can do these steps himself. Mm -hmm. So I show this to my manager and he says, oh, you know, it always looks nice, but I want to have a certain order and sequence here. We do not want it alphabetically. See, start with a C, D. Now we should start with turnover, obviously, right? Turnover and then the cost mm -hmm. of sales. Oh yeah, so how do we do that? Very simple, I'll just go to the first cell. I'll just type over there, turn over. Turn over, enter, see? Mm -hmm. I'm typing cost of sales. And now maybe I want to see personnel. So it rearranges itself. You want to see now mm -hmm. uh, marketing, marketing. Communication, maybe in general, just type in G. Maybe here we have occupancy, occupancy. Yeah, so this, and maybe a travel. Oh, there's another one, maybe over here. Travel. Oh. We can zoom in a, a little bit, so make sure uh, uh, people from cell, cell phones will be able to see as well. Sorry. Uh, uh -huh. No problem, no problem. So, so when doing this, we have a manual uh, order of the items. Yes, you only have to do it once. That's mm -hmm. nice. So make sure that you 
don't invent new levels. It's very important that you have a good chart of accounts and uh, decide upfront which levels are you going to use in your financial reporting. Mm -hmm. So now we have a, a, a nice order and sequence. So maybe the last step is, uh, yeah, I want to see maybe the total result, right? If I do, do the grand total here in Excel through the pivot table, of course, it wants to add up all these numbers. Hmm? Show you again, if I go to pivot table, analyze or to design, if I say grand totals on four rows only, sorry, not that one. I always get mixed up with that one. for columns only see if i do the one in the pivot table it will add up these these numbers right this is 923 but of course it's not correct i want to have turnover minus cost of sales minus personnel minus etc mm -hmm. so this one is not correct so let's get back to grand totals off for rows and columns so i have to calculate the result as a new cell over here so people say oh let's type in result and do the calculate ourselves no no we can do that within excel you know how to do that within the pivot table you would like to include an uh, a new level a new level your results and then it should show me and turn over minus cost of sales minus personnel etc yes uh from the examples that that i have in my mind the the first thing that i would like to you to, to clarify for all the the audience and and also for myself it's why why because why do, did you use the the calculated items instead of the the calculated fields for the the variance this this is the first point yeah. and then uh, answering the your question how would we create the, the a new level i would use a calculated item but now now uh, i think you are uh, making that one million question uh, we cannot use both so uh, probably I, you are I'll, using I'll, the, the i will use a calculated item again here because we want to keep it simple for the people again uh first back to your first question calculate item why is it called calculate item uh let's go back to the power query mm -hmm. again yes so uh, queries and connections there it is let's go to this total data double click over here i'm back mm -hmm. in my power query world we have them appended we have yeah. several rows yeah. of of actual several rows of, of if i um calculated field is like adding a new column on the right hand side over here that's what we call a calculated field but that's not what we want we want to know the difference between actuals and budget mm -hmm. they're, they're running in a horizontal order you see uh, and then okay. we if you want to do calculation within between rows so to speak then you have to mm -hmm. use what's called calculated item That's uh, it. okay uh, I, I was trying in, inside my mind i was trying to compare with an example that that i have in, in my channel about uh, a coronavirus uh, data set and mm -hmm. then uh, i created uh, another query to to make a column it, so i i i got a totally different way uh, now now i understand and and mm -hmm. talking about the power query i, I have a, a a warning for for people from brazil uh, i i have a, a step by step that that we can review in the end but i saw that at some point uh, here now the date you made a conversion to mm -hmm. date but you are using american oh, format i know you probably have to do some some other stuff probably you have to do like uh, oh this yes using locals yes. Using local. local yes yes in, in brazil if people get some some data yeah. with american format uh, this is a problem because it will mess yeah. all the dates yes, yes. so they yes, should yes. do this extra step using local 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 locally mm -hmm. i don't know how to pronounce it. and then you have to do the following stuff mm -hmm. shows like okay 
takes forever. If if their system is 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 uh, they are different from the the same they perform. Yes. Yeah, and then you have to say what date type is it. You have to tell them it's a date. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them the local date that I want to see is the Brazilian one. That's the step that you have mm -hmm. to do. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Good, excellent. Let, let me uh, once we are inside the power query. Let me go go back just a little bit. So I'm I'm going to make sure make sure that everybody is following. So uh, mm -hmm. for the first first query, you you got close and load and only create connection. That's then right. For this for the second the same thing. Yeah. Uh, a fun a fun fact. If if people roll back the video, they they will see me uh, on the third step. Uh, writing cl close and load again, but then I, I turn off the banner uh, because the, the the third step is not closing load. The th third is mer merge queries. Yes, we did indeed. Uh, we started here with the actuals to to collect uh -huh. the data from the chart of accounts into the data actuals. This is like if you look up things. That's what we did. Uh huh. Over so here. so on on the step three, it, it's yeah. starting to to be different because we will start to merge. And then we add some columns and, and yes. put some columns. P people will be able to roll back the video. Check it, by the way. Now I'm here at the third step, merge queries. We have this uh -huh. wheel. If you click on this wheel, click. You can see what you did, see? You can yeah. always see what you did. Some people say, what is this wheel doing over here? I expanded data stuff. What is this? Click on the wheel. Oh. I clicked on type, level, and sign. So let's mm -hmm. say you made a, a mistake, you can always undo it over here or make some corrections. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then on the next step, you got some trans mm -hmm. transformation, add column, yeah. custom column. Yeah. And no, oh, the, the other step, the, the five, uh, unpivot, call uh, some other columns. Yeah, that was pretty, was pretty data budget. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't pivot the other columns, yes. Yeah. Because yes. it was looking like this. I had to turn it around, so to speak. So it's called. Yeah. I, I, I'm just compacting here, but uh, it, for, for people who are watching, uh, make sure you later uh, roll back the videos and, and, and make some pauses to, to repeat the, the exercise, and then you will be able to, to do the yeah. same. And then finally, you appended the, the queries to, to put actual and budget one yeah, has one big table yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes that's it and this finally you you ended up uh, closing and loading but as a pivot table you you first close and then created the pivot table later yeah. but we could do this uh directly if we had in mind the creation yeah. of the, the pivot sure table. Uh -huh. sure yeah 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 excellent excellent well a copy of all of this here Table two, oh, okay. mm -hmm. pivot table two, pivot table two, and in this pivot table, um, I don't want to see the levels. Just put a type over here. Yeah, this is a very simple one, and then probably we can create a nice uh, pivot chart. But you you still have the the, the variance, okay? Uh, this yeah. is to make a different kind of report, okay? Yeah, something like this, see? Mm -hmm. Not like that. So you can see, okay, this is the actual, the budget, and I probably have a variance over here. So that's nice. You need mm -hmm. to change the format over here like that with percentages, see? Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can probably put it next to here. First report. No. And there you have it, your first report. Something like that. Get rid of the, uh, I don't know, we do is get rid of the headings and grid lines, and you have something like that. Mm -hmm. Look at that over here, huh? Actual versus budget. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Make it nice color over here, like title, bold, 
something like that. And there you have it. So the next month we would have a new download over here, new numbers, new budget. Uh -huh. Go over here and then very simple, do the data refresh all, oh, and then you have the new numbers. Yeah, so, yeah. The new new data as new data come, it's just a, a matter of of refresh, and then we we have the report done already done. Yeah. We, we don't need to do many things. That's right. And so people say, oh, how many? So mm -hmm. my question was, how many formulas did I create? Well, how many formulas did I create here on this sheet? Well, actually, on this sheet, I didn't create any formulas. That was maybe the only formulas that I created was within the pivot tables, like A and B, actual minus budget. That was the only formula that I created, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the power query, what formulas did I take? Maybe sign times amount, which is also a very simple one. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Those are two formulas over there. So with a minimum of formulas, ladies and gentlemen, you can create a nice actual versus budget uh, report. We we spent some extra time creating the model, but once it's done, it's just a refresh. We don't need you to make you know. that manual thing again and again and again. And and uh, what I see in many companies, so uh, it's your interview, but here I, I, I will put a pinch of uh, advice. Uh, they people try to follow the the easy way but the the easy way if you have to do again and again and again in the end of your month or your life it will be too much it, it yeah. will be too much so it, it's better to to go deeper uh, to study the tools yes and of course the, you, you are making here this in one hour but this is not the kind of thing that that is made in one hour this is a kind of thing to to do in, in a day taking decisions talking with the stakeholders what they want what they yeah. really need and, and then once it's done it's automated so it will be hard now but it will be easy later yes i know vba involved over here and if i have to explain uh -huh. super user how to work to work this model, it's very simple for them. They say, oh yeah, those are not, there's very, no difficult formulas involved here, no VLOOKUP things, so or index, or no match. Just mm -hmm. A and B, or one times one, you know, God, they can understand yeah. that. Yeah, and, and I, I'm telling, uh, do the hard way today and the easy tomorrow, but this is for people who are not familiar with the power yeah. query because when we start to, to do this again and again and again it's it sounds very easy for us as well to to create a custom column we have some some clicks clicks here 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 and once we are more familiar it will be even easier to to do and this is a, a, a question of of practicing they have to practice yeah and I know people, once they see this, they say, oh, I didn't know I had this already. Yeah, you already have it for several years. You never used it before. So I always have a mission to accomplish uh, Cristiano. And so that's why mm -hmm. I'm teaching these classes to people, you know, showing them all the possibilities. And uh, yeah, I mean, especially with the month end closing, they have to create many reports and, you know, putting them in PowerPoint, which is ridiculous. You already have any, everything over here. So you can save a lot of time, a lot of money by just creating interactive reports here. You can even add a, a you know, well, it doesn't work here because we only have one year, but you can even add a, a, a year slicer, you know, that pivot table, analyze, insert a slicer, hit timeline, see? Oh, can, can you remove and show again? Because okay. I, I was typing uh, uh, the, yeah. your so, advice here, okay. So mm -hmm. be sure that you are here in the budget, or sorry, in the pivot table. Mm -hmm. Table analyze, mm -hmm. filter, insert timeline, and it will go uh -huh. and find all the columns that has that have a date in it. It's only one column here, date. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we have it. Put it over here, and you can select a month now. For example, mm -hmm. I want to see the numbers for the month of. Uh, july for example 
these numbers change, but this one does not change because I still have to uh, click on this one, right click, and then da, 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 da. no, I have to go to the second here, to this here, right click, mm -hmm. and then where is it? No, sorry. The, you have to, you the, have to click on this, uh, the timeline. The timeline. You click over there. Mm -hmm. Right click, and then do the report connections. You see, it has been. Ah, uh, uh, you 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 want to control both reports both with the same timeline? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Them, it's linked. Okay. Uh -huh. no, you can change the months. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. and, yeah. I got gotcha. you. I was trying to understand the, the purpose, yeah. but, but yeah. I, I understand now. Okay, makes sense. And then when we see the other report, it will be the same period that we are choosing. Yes, yes. you can even the, have the, two periods like that or three periods like yeah. that. I, I, I spent lots of VBA to do this in the past. Yeah. Before <laughs> this. <laughs> lots of VBA to, to do that. So this is what yeah. I call an interactive dynamic report. To the Ciano, and uh -huh. when I show this to the people in the finance department, said, "Whoa, this is what we want to see." Oh. Don't yeah. come up with thirty-six columns again and fifty lines. We don't want to see those again. You want to see this here? Yeah, uh, I'm. I, I'm gonna going to to show their face here. <laughs> this is the face that they they do when when they look this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. Excellent. I was writing here uh, when we you started to show. We we are almost in the end of, of this presentation, and this is uh, really really cool. But I was writing down here uh, a tip that I am I am extracting from your demonstration. Uh, people can use Power Query to get data from the workbook itself because when people think of Power Query, they think of getting data from exter external sources, from yeah, a CSV file, from yeah, the web. Does it really have but, to? Yeah. yeah, but here we are extracting data from the own workbook, from the same file. Uh, yeah. And uh, the magic here is to create the tables before. And on the beginning, I was writing down another tip. It's a more than a tip is an advice. Make sure people, people who are watching, make sure you rename the tables because if you don't rename, rename it will be table one, table two, yeah. table three. What what is table two? Yes, very good. Yeah, yeah. We 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 cannot figure out what is table two once we are inside Power Query trying to append or, or merge something. It's much better to do this. On the first step, you have actual budget or yeah. whatever. Uh, I made an example from the coronavirus data set. We oh, had yeah. the, the the number of people with uh, with the the case number of cases, number of deaths, and number of people who are healthy now. So oh, yeah. so we have the the tables and, and the queries, and we rename the things to to make sure everything will be great. Uh, brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, Tony. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here. We could be here all the, the, the day talking about this because it, it's our passion, but I know that you have your, your uh, time. Uh, it, we are living a crazy time now, uh, working from home, but I know that you have your things to, to do there. I would like to to I, I would like to hear from you the the final words to, to end this video with your advices or, or advice or announcement whatever you you want to, to say then it's your time we are going to end once yeah. you you have the the final words let me put on, on just just again this this i have to, to show again because this is a very beautiful sunset yeah. Let me remove this this bunny here, and just finishing. I, I'm going to put you on the screen again, and it's your time now. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, your thank time. you very much, uh, 
everyone for joining us today. And my advice for you is uh, always learn every day a bit of Excel. If it's only five minutes, you know, learn every day about Excel, about the new stuff, Power Query, and maybe you go on with some other difficult stuff. Make sure that what you learned also do it in practice. That's the best way how you learn it. And also, um, maybe you're going to teach some other colleagues your new stuff. Once you start teaching people how to use uh, existing material or new material, you will make it your own. So with that in mind, obrigado, thank you, merci. And uh, well, you can send me some questions. Here we have my email address, a.dthejonker at kpnmail.nl. And uh, yeah, you can uh, ask me some questions or maybe some other um, material that you want to have reviewed. And yeah, hopefully see you soon.